Welcome to talk on efficient auctions in an auto bidding world. My name is Song Zhou, and this is joint work with Yuan Deng, Jimmy Mao, and Wahab American. We are all from Google Research. Let's start with a quick overview on ad auction and auto bidding. So when a user comes to Google and search something, um, Google may return some ads and um, together with the organic search results depend on the content of the query. The ads are often determined by the so-called generalized second prize auction, or simply GSP auction. So the auction basically runs as follows. First, sort the candidates based on their bid multiplied by the predicted click-through rate. And then, depending on the number of slots for ads, select the top K ads to be shown to the user. And finally, for each ad, if it has been clicked, let's say it's the ice ad, if it clicks, it will need to pay the runner-up score, uh, so it's bid of the I plus one candidate times the PCTR of the I plus one candidate, divided by the PCTR of the ice candidate. Auto bidding algorithms are designed to help advertisers to optimize their bids dynamically over time. So this can be, for example, very much helpful when advertisers are interested in conversions rather than clicks. So let's take the um, ad in the picture as an example. So dance classes, um, the advertisers might be more interested in users going to their website and order a class or become a member rather than just uh, receiving more clicks from users. Let's take target CPA as an example, which is a quite commonly used auto-bidding strategy. The strategy aims to maximize the number of conversions subject to the constraint that the average cost per action price not exceeding a target set by the advertiser. So the auto-bidding algorithm will set the bids proportional to um, the target times the predicted conversion rate given the ad being clicked for each query. So this can be more efficient than just setting a prime bid across all the auctions because it basically spend more money on those queries um, are more likely to result in a conversion uh, once being clicked. And this type of bidding strategy, namely proportional to the target times um, PCVR, is often referred as the uniform bidding strategy which is optimal when the auction is truthful. In fact, there are many different auto-bidding algorithms designed for different objectives that advertisers may have. So in this paper, we will mainly focus on target CPA and target ROAS. So here, target ROAS can be actually think as a weighted version of target CPA, where the advertiser may have um, different values for different conversions. So here, rule R stands for return on ad spend. And both of the two strategies can be formalized by the following program. So in the objective, it's maximizing value times allocation. So allocation here refers to clicks and value. Um, in the case of TCPA, we'll refer to the probability of the conversion given clicks. And for target rule R, it will be the uh, predictive value given click. And the constraint then um, can be write as follows. Here, it's slightly different from the IR constraint uh, because it has an extra tau. And the tau parameter will be 1 over target CPA in the case of uh, TCPA. And it will be directly the target ROAS uh, in the TROAS setting. When well, everyone is using auto bidding strategies, then the agent is actually following a very different utility model from the um, classic assumptions in auction theory. Then the question is, do the existing auctions continue to perform well in an auto bidding world? Here, we measure performance by the efficiency at equilibrium. From a previous work by uh, Argo et al, we know that the welfare equilibrium could be like 
as bad as one half approximation to the optimal welfare in the worst case, even under VCG auctions. And this is a tight bound. In this paper, we show that uh, this can be improved by introducing boost in auctions. So we can improve the bound to C plus 1 divided by C plus 2, where C is a um, positive parameter for the boost weight. And we also have more results that, uh, for more complicated settings that we will uh, introduce later. Now we briefly introduce the format of auction with boost. So in this type of auctions, we rank candidates by score. So score equals to um, PCTR times bid plus boost. And uh, under uniform bidding, the bid will be um, alpha, which is the bid multiplier, times the target times PCVR. So the score also equals to PCVR times alpha times target times PCVR plus boost. And from then on, we'll simplify the notation as um, by using the entire target times PCVR and times PCTR as V and PCTR times boost as Z. So the score will be right as equals to bid plus boost. And bid will equal to bid multiplier times the value V and boost is Z. And the auction, uh, similar to the standard ones, will rank the candidate and select the top K candidate as a winner. And for each winning candidate I, once it gets clicked, we will charge the price. And the price equals to the standard payment rule under either uh, VCG auction or GSP auction. And then uh, minus the boost of candidate I and take that in a max with zero. We know that if the underlying auction is a truthful one, then this auction with boost will also be truthful for buyers with cost linear utilities, which then implies that the uniform bidding strategies are also optimal for auto bidders if the underlying auctions are, for example, VCG auctions. Now let's consider the following example which could be helpful in illustrating the uh, auction with boost and also uh, the bounds from our theorems. So the example consists of two auctions and two bidders. In auction one, only bidder one is interested in winning the item, and in auction two, both bidders are interested in. And we assume both bidders have tau equal to one, and here epsilon is a small number goes to zero, and we use boost equal to c times the value. It is easy to see that optimal welfare from the two auctions is 2 plus d, so 1 plus d from auction 1 and 1 from auction 2. And when c is between 0 and d, uh, the following two bid multipliers actually form an equilibrium. So bid 1 bids the, uh, the bid multiplier larger than 1 plus c divided by epsilon, and bid 2 use the bid multiplier equals to 1. So we can verify this by um, bidder 1 actually wins all the items and not paying more, more than, than his value received. So uh, the constraint is we respect him. And for bidder 2, um, if bidder 2 wants to get more items, it will need to bid at least 1 plus C. And that will result in a payment higher than uh, the value he received. So the current bid multiplier is 1. Uh, is the best response for bidder 2. And in this case, the total welfare is 1 plus d plus epsilon. By taking c equals to d, uh, this example will be an um, upper bound that match our approximation ratio of c plus 1 over c plus 2 uh, with boost. And if we take c equals to d equals to 0, then this will be an uh, upper bound matching the uh, approximation ratio of 1 over 2 in the uh, work by Agro at all without boost. So our main theorems in this paper can be briefly summarized um, by this table. So we introduced two types of boost. So one is called C value competitive boost, uh, which can be used in the setting without budget constraint. And uh, another is called C benchmark competitive boost, 
uh, which can be used the settings with or without budget constraint. So the definition of the C value competitive boost is basically um, the difference of the boost between I and I prime is no less than C times uh, their value difference uh, for only I and I prime such that VI is larger than I prime. The definition of the C benchmark competitive boost is that uh, the difference between the boost of I and I prime is no less than C times VI, the value of I. Um, whenever the candidate I ranks above I prime in a given benchmark allocation. We emphasize that our theories hold even outside equilibrium on the truthful auctions, as long as the following two conditions are met. The first is that the target constraints are not violated. Otherwise, uh, the, the allocation will not make sense. The second condition is that all bid multipliers will be no less than one. And that is um, actually automatically satisfied in truthful auctions. And this service can be further generalized to um, non-truthful auctions, but made with like additional assumptions. Um, and here we just omitted the details. As a justification of our theoretical results, um, we conduct empirical evaluation on semi-synthetic data. So in these two plots, um, we present the, the uh, liquid welfare and revenue um, trend over iteration of the auto bidding algorithms in VCG auctions with different types of boosts. So we have uniform boosts with different weights uh, and benchmark boosts of different weights. So here, uniform boost is a special case of uh, the value competitive boost, and benchmark boost is a special case of the benchmark competitive boost. So we can see from the plot that um, on the liquid welfare side, uh, from the beginning, the welfare get improved by the boost. And then over time, as the auto bidders adjust their bids to converge, uh, the impact may gradually um, either increase or decrease to a stable point. And from the plot of revenue, we can see that the initial impact of revenue are all negative for all candidates. Uh, that's because we are like, basically subtracting the boost from their final payments. Very quickly, like after response, the revenue goes up and finally converge to uh, somewhere become revenue positive in the end. And in this table, uh, we show more number of lifts at the converge state for both VCG and GSP auctions. So basically, we can see a similar uh, impact from GSP auctions compared with VCG auctions. And uh, especially for the benchmark versions, we can see the improvements on welfare is increasing as the weight increases. Uh, but the revenue is not always like that. So for very large rules, the revenue could actually go down a little bit. Thanks very much for watching this talk. And let me stop here with a brief summary of this paper. Thank you.